Hello? Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Uh, in the next half hour, we will pay tributes to Jair Gonçalves, a friend of many of us who are here today and who passed away last month. I would like to thank his wife, daughter, and granddaughter who joined us today in this tribute and whose presence is a to us. Jairo was a professor in the Department of Mathematics here at USP and a distinguished member of the Brazilian Alpha community. He was a dear friend and will be greatly missed. Our program is divided into three parts. First, we will hear Arnaldo Manu, one of his closest friends, talking on Jairo's life and career. Next, Javier Sanchez will make an impossible effort of squeezing in 15 minutes an overview of Jairo's many contributions to power. We shall end with a slide presentation of photographs of Jairo with his friends and family. So, Javier, please, if you could come and start. So, the name is uh, Javier Sanchez. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, being able to talk about Jairo, uh, even though our circumstances are a little bit uh, I will talk a little bit about Jairo and then, and just a little bit about his career. It is, uh, again, Family. He, that's where he was born. Uh, was in a family of modest means, uh, but uh, at that time uh, he had to enter the public school system. When I say he had to enter, that's something that is relevant uh, when you think of it nowadays. Nowadays in Brazil, the public school system is quite bad, but at that time. Uh, it was still quite good and he was able to get a good education and uh, as uh, most Brazilians at that time he was uh, he started his main philosophical well, ideological commitment okay and, uh, he was uh, serious but not very religious of, even in this condition so, uh, there, are, there are many stories about Jairus uh, early days, but there, there is a very special one that deserves to be told. Uh, in 1964, there was a military coup in Brazil. Uh, it started a kind of authoritarian regime, and in 1968, it became a dictatorship. It was a coup within the coup. And there was a resistance movement. Uh, it was, they were called terrorists by the government and uh, freedom fighters by the others. Uh, well, that's the usual thing. And Jairo uh, got involved in uh, some of these operations. Not, not a very serious involvement, but he uh, got involved in that in an operation as a spotter. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't very su successful at that. He got caught, spent some time in jail. And <coughs> that's bad. Okay. It, uh, he was uh, in his late teens, he was about to get into the university, but uh, the lady entering the university and it, it had later consequences too. But there is an upshot also because after being in jail, he became for life an algebraic freedom fighter. 
Okay, so trying to free groups and free algebras. Uh, <coughs> well, after all, he got into the university, but uh, that's part of his academic life, and I'll tell you about it later. Let's get still to get personal uh, and I have an anecdote to tell you. Late 70s, I was studying abroad and came back in late 78 for a vacation. And Jano, we were in contact by him. At that time, we used letters. I don't know. Well, that seems that we were writing paper and sent through the mail. There was no email at that time. But uh, at that time, uh, Don Passman's uh, treatise in group rings had just uh, came into print, and Jairo asked me to buy it. At that, at that time, buying such a book in Brazil cost a nine and a leg and took forever to arrive. So, okay, uh, I brought the book for him, and we met. In a, in a bar. Okay. It, it was actually, as an aside, I, I think at that time, uh, Jairo, I don't think Jairo would have ever dreamt of uh, actually meeting Passman and working with him, uh, doing research for so many years. Okay. Uh, but I brought him the book. Okay. So we are at the bar, we are talking, and then he tells me quite happily. He had found a girl that he was quite interested in. And uh, we, if we see, we see the pictures, we see that they were made for each other. Okay. <laughs> it's a perfect pair. Okay. Uh, it actually worked out about two years later, the later they were married. And that marriage uh, was a quite successful one and a happy one and uh, lasted for the last of probably their, their days. Okay? And, uh, uh, it's a story also of uh, coming from uh, 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 coming from uh, Bad conditions. I mean, they, they weren't. Uh, they weren't uh, both Jairo and Rosa. They came from actually very modest uh, uh, backgrounds, and they were. They both uh, studied a lot and worked hard, and they kind of uh, changed their, say, let's say, social and economic status. It's something that's uh, quite commendable, uh, very, very uncommon. Now, uh, I told them, I told you the, the story, and they uh, started a family quite quickly. And here are the kids, okay? Uh, just let me tell you that the, the kids have, have grown up a little bit. So if you see them here, I think you will be hard pressed to recognize them. Okay, but they are still there. And the place of the kids now, has been taken off by the brackets. And they have a full tribe. And here we have all associations, even uh, uh, Perseu is embarking, but uh, they, they were really uh, happy. They, it's a happy moment. Okay. Uh, okay, that's the family part. And let's talk a little bit about his academic life. Okay. <laughs> he eventually got into USP, or got admitted into USP, and uh, he finished, he graduated at 74, and was immediately hired as an instructor. At that time, as, as was told uh, just before, okay, at that time, uh, there were there was a dearth of uh, doctors, PhDs in uh, mathematics. And so, and there was a lot of work to be, to be done. So they hired every good uh, recent graduate uh, 
uh, to be an instructor. And that one happened to, to, to Zayed. Except that uh, his previous adventures came to bite him in the back, and he was gently asked by the security forces to resign his position, or else, well, he did it. He resigned and found an engineering school in which they needed an instructor and they weren't uh, under this uh, police vigilance. But he didn't stop uh, studying, he continued, he got his uh, master's degree and later his PhD under the guidance of Cesar Cosino, who also taught him judo so that he could flip back uh, all the police that came after him. <laughs> Uh, and meanwhile, in between, uh, there was a softening, softening in the police regime. So, 1980, he was hired. Okay. And now, after he was hired, he finished his PhD, and then he continued his career here at USP and rose to the ranks. Uh, he became associate professor, full professor. Uh, he, he did about uh, all sorts of things, about everything. He uh, was coordinated uh, teaching groups, and uh, of course, his career, he has a career in algebra that you will be hearing more about. Uh, wrote about 60 something papers. Uh, one thing that he was quite instrumental is uh, organizing several congresses and group rings, group rings and group rings. There, there was just one that finished last week. Uh, and one of these congresses uh, recognized his, his work, okay, just five years ago. Now, uh, to finish this part, I just want to uh, talk about one thing that I consider uh, one of Jairus' uh, strongest personal uh, qualities. Okay? Uh, and it's quite interesting that uh, I, probably everybody who worked with him, uh, know about it. Uh, his persistence, tenacity. He didn't let go. When he started working on something, it was, well, today. He really did it. And one thing that, uh, when I thought about it, uh, it, was, it was an interesting realization that it was not just a quality of him, but it, it was a value for him. It was a value, and everybody that got email from Jaira got, at the end, his signature, this quotation. And, and, I find it also interesting that it comes from the Talmud, which uh, culturally has nothing to do, especially with the Jaira, but uh, it, it kind of saying, you know, you have to go for it. Okay? And that, that was Jaira. Okay? That was what he was doing. And if you're in doubt, you can ask for him at his co-authors, and now he, I didn't coordinate with Peter about uh, pictures, uh, photos, and maybe we are going to have some overlap later. Okay, but let, let's have a look at of some of those co-authors. Now, for those that don't know, well, everybody knows Cesar and the Basman, Darshan, Sergo and Lichtman and Mazi. 
吃，嗯、呃，和吃。And now we have Bang Pass and Vitor, and here he, he and Alexander Blichman are cooking some durians. And Marzi has a, is having fluffy thoughts. And now Leila and also Misha and some gleeful fellow I can't, can't recognize. And Antonio with a full hair. <laughs> Full head of hair. <laughs> and Angel and Cesar again, and well, some more, and Lao and Misha and Angel. And well, Miguel and uh, Lucy were in his quarters, but uh, they're still in the free picture, so that's okay. And here we are caught red handed in this in an explicit act of co altering. And just to finish, here's a, here we have a picture. Well, this photo is from the, that last GRGR, or the, that one that uh, is 70 feet. Well, uh, last, last October we had the bad news that he got a tumor, and, and then uh, in spite of uh, very good medical care and very loving uh, care from his family and so on. He uh, didn't make it and he passed away, left us, and he's missed. Hi. Hi. Hello. Well, thank you, Vitor. Uh, well, as Vitor said at the beginning, I am going to talk about uh, Jairo's scientific career. And as he said, it's impossible to talk about uh, all his career in 15 minutes, so I will only give some pieces <coughs> of, of his work. So you have to know that there are much, much more about him uh, in mathematics. Okay? So, uh, but one of the things that should be clear from the beginning okay, is that uh, Jairo Gonzalez was an energetic and talented, talented mathematician. This was uh, said by Donald Passman. And mainly he had two uh, research uh, lines. One about the Bison rings and the other one about the particles. Um, just a look at uh, his uh, research, general look at was his research. As Arnaldo said, he had at least 60 papers, in particular according to Central Blood 66. And, well, he talked about his co so uh, it is clear that he made serious mathematics with those co authors And he always published in very good journals. For example, he published papers in the Journal of Algebra, in the Proceedings of the AMS, in the Israel Journal of Mathematics, in the Journal of the London Mathematical Society, and many more, of course. And, well, about this general view of his career, what I find uh, really impressive is that if you look at the mid 90s in uh, uh, 2020, then he published, on average, for 25 years, at least two papers every year on average. So that is somehow also what uh, uh, what Arnaldo said: his persistence and his work uh, every day. Okay. Uh, also. Uh, according to uh, the, uh, the Massinet, he published even more, 79 papers. And, well, I've been told that uh, his last paper with his master's student, Gabriel, has been accepted a few, uh, not long ago. So, 
there will be at least 70, okay? And well, he, he got 465, uh, at least 465 citations. Oh well, and, okay, the, the list of the authors uh, Arnaldo already told us, okay? So, I will, first of all, okay, before beginning this, I will give okay, some glimpses of his works and uh, well, you will see that most of the things that I will talk about his work are from the last 15 years. Okay? And there are some reasons for that. First of all, because this is what I know better about Jairo, that's for sure, um, a reason. The second is that I contacted some of his uh, co-authors and I said them, please point something that you think it is good uh, that I talk about Jago and most of them told me papers in this in the lab about the last 15 years. Okay, so it's not my fault entirely. Okay, and the third one is that uh, his, uh, his works during his first years they were pioneering in the in the in his research lines. Uh, so that is unbearable. So that is something that uh, cannot be measured. Okay, but during these last 15 years, his results, because the the theory was more developed and so on, the results are more well, well rounded. So that is also another reason why I chose uh, that. That part of his, of his career. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say um, an important result of the, of the work with uh, we have Angel del Rio and Ophelia Broche. Um, well, there is a, or there was a conjecture in in uh, group rings which says the following: that if you have a film and this is a group. If G is a periodic group and the units of Kg satisfy a group identity, then uh, Kg satisfies a polynomial identity. Okay? This conjecture was proved in the general case by Liu. And, but then uh, the work of Jai, uh, Angel, and Osner says that you, um, if the group of units satisfy and if a weaker condition, that is that uh, if the units of Kg satisfy a lower polynomial condition, condition, which is not satisfied by this algebra, is the algebra free algebra generated by those two generators subjected to those relations, then the group ring satisf uh, satisfies a polynomial identity. Uh, another uh, line of research of Jairo was uh, as Arnaldo said, uh, he was always looking for free objects in the vision rings. Okay? And this is, there is a conjecture of Alexander Litzman uh, which says the following If D is an uncommutative division ring, then the multiplicative group D uh, minus zero okay, contains a free group of rank two. This conjecture is still open. Okay? And Jairo, early in his career, proved that for a large class of division rings, that is true. Okay? He proved that the Lixman conjecture is true whenever the division ring is finite dimensional. Okay? He proved even more. Okay? He proved his statement uh, that if D is a division ring, finite dimensional over the center, an H is a sub, subnormal subgroup of D, not contained in the center, then H contains a free subgroup of rank okay? uh, Well, if you look at the paper, not, not, in the, not even in the title, appears uh, this result. Okay? Uh, the paper uh, was more oriented towards group rings, okay? but in the middle, he proved this important result about the conjecture of Alexander. Also, as, um, as Arnaldo said, 
in the, I would say, around the 90s, uh, they began to work on all together, okay? And uh, I will need first uh, an observation that is the following. If you have a division ring, R, a subring of D, and S, any ring, uh, well, it is easy to see that if the, uh, the group of units of S contain a free group, and there exists a ring homomorphism from R to S, such that in R there are existing vertical elements whose image are the, the elements that generate a free group, then D contains a free group into generators because uh, those R1 and R2 generate a free group. Okay? Well, uh, this observation uh, was very important. Okay? Uh, in the words of Arnaldo, uh, uh, Jairo proof in his thesis using this alternative that the conjecture calls for finite dimensional division rings. Okay, this was the result before. Then uh, we took from there in two different directions, one trying to verify the conjecture for larger classes of division rings and looking at related commutative commutativity questions. Yeah? Uh, the other one, which is the one that, uh, that I am going to talk more, is fi about finding explicit free pairs in subfinite dimensional division rings. And, uh, well, uh, the technique is, some, is something that Jairo used during his core career, is that uh, well, there are large classes of finite dimensional division rings that are described as a vector space with a specific basis and a multiplication table of the, for the basis elements. For some classes, like quaternions, quaternion algebras, in the usual, something more general, the usual quaternions, or some of cross products. And the table is very common. Uh, then the objective that they push at this point, with Mas Silvani, was to describe free pairs that look nice inside bases. Okay, so some uh, summing up. Okay, that ring S, you put some algebra of quaternions. They studied, they made a really hard and a really detailed study of how to find free uh, free objects, in free groups in those rings of quaternions. And then, uh, of course, uh, there was, uh, was not easy. You have to find that ring R, that subring R of, of D, uh, such that you have that homomorphism. Okay? Well, I know I, I have explained this, well, very, without many details, very generic, general, because that is a bit involved, okay, but just to. Uh, to point out the importance of the result that, or of these techniques that I Jairo used during his core for career is some words of Alexander Lichtman, who said that uh, the following. I like all of Jairo's papers, but one of them became especially interesting for me. A paper in the Journal of Algebra where he, together with Arnaldo and Matthew Shibani, proved a beautiful and important theorem of free subgroups in the division rings generated by residual torsion free Nilpotin groups. It is one of those papers where they developed that technique that I said before. Well, at the words of Alexander Lichtman, this was a remarkable theory, and this proof was, well, that technique that I said before. Okay? Well, now I want to talk about some of his results, well, one of his results with Jason Bell, and for that, I need some uh, definition that is that of the skew polynomial rings. Okay? If you have a field, or in general a ring, but I will now specialize for fields, if you have a field, you have an automorphism of the field K, and you have a delta which is a sigma derivation, it means that it satisfies that. You observe that if sigma is the identity, what you have is the, a usual derivation. Okay? Then, you can construct uh, a set 
or which is a Sanabellian group, is the usual polynomial ring. But now the coefficients do not commute with the variety. Okay? Uh, you have to have this that condition. Okay? When you multiply x by a, the result is sigma of a x plus delta of a. Okay? Uh, this condition is necessary so that the, uh, the ring that you will obtain is associated. Okay? Well, it is well known that uh, this uh, skew polynomial ring is an ordinary domain. So it has an ordinary division ring of fractions. So uh, it has uh, one can construct a division ring from them. Okay, so this skew polynomial ring, which I denote with that kind of brackets. And one of the results that he proved with uh, Jason Bell was that if we have a field, sigma automorphism of k, delta sigma derivation, they proved that if d, if the uh, ordering of fractions of the skew polynomial ring is not commutative, then d contains a free non simple subgroup. And this result does not depend on the characteristic, does not depend on sigma, does not depend on delta. Whenever it is not commutative, you find a free non-cyclic group there. And Bell was very happy about this result. Okay? Bell said that this was a very satisfying project where I felt we had obtained a definitive result. And we relied heavily on Jairo's encyclopedic knowledge of the field to work out a viable approach, approach to this question. Being able, and he also said yeah. about Jairo in general, being able to work with Jairo was one of the truly great experiences in my life. I believe Jairo also felt, felt we had something special when we worked together. And I confirm that he was very happy of his work with, uh, with Jason Bell. Well, uh, he also he looked for three groups in the vision range, but he also looked for free algebras in division rings. There is a conjecture of Makar Limanov that says the following. Is D is finitely generated, D finitely generated as a division ring, not as an algebra. Okay, so it's finitely generated using some uh, product and inversion of elements. Okay? Uh, an infinite dimensional of a center, then D contains a free C algebra in two generators. Okay, Jairo made a lot of work uh, about this conjecture. Okay, he proved in many cases where it was true. Okay, the conjecture is hasn't been proved yet or disproved. Okay, it's not known. Uh, but I want to talk more about results, not of the conjecture, but related to the conjecture. Okay, uh, the third one is. A uh, result favorite of mine, of, of the ones of Jairo, because of its simplicity, simplicity in its statement and also in, in its proof. It's a paper of just like three papers, so three, three pages or more, almost, and says the following. Suppose that this is a division ring that satisfies Macarena's conjecture. It was proved uh, in that in many cases. Uh, well, in many cases, that Macarena conjecture was true, that D contains, in fact, non commutative free group algebras. Okay? But then Jairo and Shirvani proved that that was not a coincidence. Okay? They proved that if you have a division ring with center Z, and if Z is uncountable and D contains a free Z algebra of rank 2, then D contains a Z free group algebra. Of okay. Uh, so this was one of the um, most more important results to somehow uh, pass from the Macarena of conjecture to uh, the following conjecture that says that if D is finitely generated an infinite dimensional over C, then D contains a free Z subalgebra in two generators. Well, in the last part of this career. Uh, 
uh, Jairo, uh, the light very much the following uh, problem, which says, is, which are versions of the uh, of the, co the conjectures that I talked before for bridge with involutions. No, so we have a field, the Yaki algebra, like a linear map. Uh, is a key evolution if those two things are satisfied, and an element is symmetric if uh, it is invariant and evolution. Uh, so, one natural question that Jairo asked was that if you have a division ring and those with an evolution, does D contain free pairs generated by symmetric elements? Does D contain free non commutative subalgebra freely generated by symmetric elements? And these are uh, uh, evolutive, okay, evolutive um, versions of the conjectures by Lippmann and uh, Makarema. Okay, and one of uh, the results that Donald does not like very much was uh, one of the last results they put together that says that if this is a division ring with a central field k of characteristic different from 2 and you have a k evolution in d and n is a normal subgroup of the multiplicative subgroup of d then if g is a star stable on a Abelian subgroup of n that is Taylor torsion free polycyclic by finite by not Abelian by finite or finite, finite of all order then n contains a free pair, two elements that generate a non commutative free group, yeah, which are symmetric. Okay? And, uh, well, Donald Passman said that this uh, result was not only important because of the result, but because of the proof. They need to extend a theorem of George Bellman, and, uh, well, he thinks that that result is interesting in itself. And Donald Passman also said this uh, about working with Jairo. Jairo's exper expertise always led the way in our joint work. He knew the next case to consider, the expected outcome, and a rough approach to the proof. Well, and I want to talk also about, uh, about this thing of uh, division rings with involution, about uh, a nice result, a very nice result of. Vitor Ferreira and Erika Fornanori, who says that suppose you have a group and you have an involution on the group, that means a map that satisfies those two things, then that involution can be extended to a k-involution of the group ring in the natural way. Then if kg is an only domain, uh, then a star can be extended to a k-involution of the foreign division ring of fractions, so we already have now a division ring with an evolution. Then, uh, for example, you take uh, as a group the free nilpotent group of class 2 generated by two elements, that means a group that is place, uh, well, it's very important in the theory of groups. Then the result that they prove is the following. I suppose that D is the division ring of the other division ring of fractions of the group algebra KG. Suppose the star is a K evolution on D induced from an evolution of D, any, any one of them, okay? Then D contains a free K algebra of rank 2 freely generated by symmetric elements. Okay? Well, so somehow these are like the uh, some of the some important results in Jairo's career. And now I want to talk a bit more about other aspects of his, of his, of his career. Uh, Jairo had uh, four postdoc, four, well, four, let's say, pure postdoc students. Okay? He had for, uh, another postdoc, which was already a professor, that he came here to work with him. But uh, Vitor Ferreira, Vitor Ferreira, uh, Eduardo Tengan, Paula Burger Veloso, you and me, okay, sorry, and me, uh, 
Ujol mej pozor, uzdajoš, ano, Bejol had some words about about Jaya, but I well I have seen all of them and I agree with all of them and the things that are going to be said could be interchanged because we all agree about that. For example, uh, Vitor said that Jaya is one of the most enthusiastic researchers I have ever met, and without a doubt, he loved what he did. And proof of that is that, as far as I know. Uh, none of, of us, uh, before knowing Jairo, we did not work in those things. It was after we met Jairo that we began to work in uh, the search of the objects in the vision. Well, Jairo was always avail available to exchange ideas, answer questions, and well, uh, Eduardo and all were able to learn a lot from Jairo, who was always a very present person. And with a lot of pain. And well, that's true. Uh, uh, he was always, uh, every week, we had at least two hour, a two hour meeting with Jairo to talk about how was the research going. Uh, Jairo's supervision helped me major as a mathematician and summoned the courage to enter and pass my first concurso. And well, uh, Position, okay. Uh, well, that's also absolutely true, okay. Because when you made a postdoc with Jairo, it was usually a postdoc of at least two years, or with the possibility of at least two years. So that was a postdoc where you don't, you didn't have to uh, think about what am, what, what am I going to do next, whatever, and to just focus on research. Um, you work a lot, and also he always encouraged his students about. Well, he, a regular question of him was, when are you going to make a concurso? When are you going to apply for a for a position? And he was very supportive on that. Okay. I well, I just want to end this uh, this talk. Uh, Somehow uh, talking about uh, uh, our research group here in Atuspi with Jairo. Uh, well, uh, the group uh, had, had, has some, like, uh, in the last 15 years, uh, Cesar Porcino, Jairo, of course, uh, Dobushaev, Vitor, Raul, and me. Uh, well, Jairo was very important for the group uh, as it is, okay? because, for example, Raul was a student, a PhD student of Jairo, uh, Dokuchayev, uh, uh, Vitor, and I, who just came here to make, uh, invited by, by him. Um, we liked it very much and we decided to stay, okay? that's in part a great, great part because of Jairo, so uh, somehow our Jairo was key in the, in the you know, research group here in Sao Paulo. Okay? So I would like to finish just saying a big thanks to Jairo and thank you too for, for your attention.
Thank you.